Hi. I have been in my feels once again these last couple of days. I know that it can be so hard to do even the most mundane tasks on harder days. I definitely still have moments where anxieties or sadness have been so consuming that I don't even care to make myself food. I skip meals, I rely on super lazy microwavable frozen meals or fast food for a few days straight. Don't love that, but we're keeping it real here. I'm not going to pretend like I'll never have those days again, but I also have days like today where I'm not feeling my very best, but I still want to pour some effort into a delicious, comforting, and healthy meal to show my body some love and really fuel myself. So I wanted to share a little what I eat in a day with more unique, delicious, healthy, but still quite easy recipes that I have been experimenting with recently. While the recipes aren't all necessarily passive or lazy, I still consider them simple enough for those slower days. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm whipping up all of these recipes in one day, but I do think that just putting in a little bit of effort into even one of your meals can make the biggest difference because cooking can be a very mindful, therapeutic experience and even help get some creative juices flowing. All right, so before we jump into the first recipe, I just want to give a quick personal disclaimer, and that is if you are a picky eater, please do not try a new recipe on a day where you're feeling extra sad or depressed or anxious. The last thing you want is for it to go wrong. I've definitely had those days where I'm like PMSing, I totally mess up my recipe, and then I end up crying and begging Zach to go and get me a chipotle burrito so we don't want that today i would suggest perhaps first trialing them on a happier day although i do think that they are all amazing and easy enough recipes to incorporate on days like today and you can even modify and tweak them to make them even more lazy so let's get right into it the first recipe that we're gonna make is actually inspired from a recent cookbook that i purchased it is a take on turkish eggs which i've actually made before in a previous vlog and i absolutely love turkish eggs she has a take on Turkish eggs that has nuts in it, so I'm gonna try that out. This is definitely the part where you can sub out the garlic for like garlic powder just to make it easier, but I personally really love garlic, so I am just gonna use the real thing. So again, the nuts are optional. Turkish eggs are traditionally made without nuts, and it's actually a little bit simpler than what I'm doing, but since I've made it a few times and I really love it, I actually wanna try this take on it. So I'm just using a mixture of chopped walnuts as well as some pistachios. But again, you do not need to incorporate the nuts. The recipe is also really, really good without it. You definitely need to eat this with the bread. And I like to toast it very, very crunchy because obviously it's a very mushy yogurt bowl. All right, I transferred the garlic yogurt over to a small plate. And I just sort of left like an indent in the center where the eggs are gonna go. And now for the most tedious part, which is to peel the eggs. One down. One to go. All 
All right, I placed the eggs on the center and this is the moment of truth to see if they are in fact jammy. I might cry if they're not. Just kidding. All right, let's see. Oh yay, we've got jam in this one. Beautiful. I did this for like, I think six and a half minutes. That is perfect. Cause I don't like my white not to be cooked. And honestly, I think that that is like a danger of salmonella. So don't do that. Now it is time to pour the buttered nuts on top. And I just added smoked paprika, chili flakes, and salt and pepper. All right guys, so for lunch, I'm actually making a sandwich that I tried at a coffee shop a couple of days ago. The base of it is turkey, raspberry, and pears, which I know sounds very, very strange. I thought the same, but it was super popular. I decided to try it and it absolutely blew my mind. So I thought that I would try to recreate it. Okay, so this is my reference picture. Um, obviously, I think they use a different bread ciabatta, but I don't have ciabatta. I can tell that most of the jam is at the bottom as well as the pears. So I think I'm gonna do the pear or the jam, the pears, the onions, the turkey, the cheese, and then the arugula. I have a kind of a random question. For your raspberry turkey sandwich, do you guys roast the pears? <laughs> yeah, the pear inside of the raspberry, because I'm trying to recreate it at home. <laughs> okay, cool, they're, they're just regular raw pears. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I don't think I'll be, be able to make it as good, but I'm gonna try. Have a good one. <laughs> Thanks, bye. That just makes this so much better and easier because I actually thought that they roast the pears for this sandwich, but it turns out that they don't, so I am even more excited. pretty hefty amount of jam because that's kind of like the main sauce of the sandwich. So I don't think, I feel like it would be kind of dry without this much jam. Don't be afraid to be generous. Honestly, I'm really scared that this is gonna taste horrible. <laughs> In which case, if it does, you probably won't be seeing this recipe at all, so. I guess, spoiler alert, it didn't come out bad. All right, next up, we've got the pears. I'm only gonna put two tomatoes because I'm actually not the biggest fan of tomatoes in sandwiches, but I do feel like it's essential because it's gonna add some juiciness, so. All right, I'm just gonna quickly clean everything up and then we will cut this baby in half and do a little taste test. It looks really good. I have to do something a little embarrassing first and take a bunch of thumbnail pictures of it. Holy 
Holy crap. This is so delicious. <laughs> this is it, like the perfect blend of sweet and savory. It is so decadent. I actually think it came out a little bit better than the restaurant. And I feel like you don't even really need the pears if you're not a big fan of that or if you don't have them. Any jam would do. So good. I never would have been able to conceptualize this. And I spent a lot of time on Pinterest scouring new recipes, unique recipes, but I truly do feel like most inspiration I get is from restaurants. So don't sleep on restaurant menus. If you ever see something that catches your eye or you really love it, try to recreate it. This is not something that I would be able to find on Pinterest. I even did try searching it up and I only found like two recipes on the internet. I know that like turkey and raspberry is giving Thanksgiving, but this is so delicious and refreshing. And it has like some fruity tropical notes. So I really do feel like it works all year round. And if you don't have pears, you could definitely substitute the pears for apples. That would be good too. Cranberry jam would also probably taste good or any jam, honestly. I'm just having a lot of negative and insecure thoughts. I've been feeling like I have a very persistent weight in my chest since I woke up, but I'm really just trying to allow it to pass. I've learned that dealing with depression, it's not always really beneficial for me to try to pathologize why I feel the way I feel because oftentimes I can feel frustrated if I don't come to an answer and at the end of the day, I just have depression. So I'm gonna have my days. What's important to me though is just trying to remind myself that it will pass, it will get better and trying not to believe all of the stories that I'm telling myself in my head. Definitely easier said than done. It's helpful to just remind myself like why would I listen to myself when I'm obviously not in the right headspace? Kind of like why would I listen to someone else's advice or opinion if they're not in the right headspace? I really wanted something cozy for dinner so we are making this delicious get well soup. I am just obsessed with Molly Baz recipes right now. I feel like they are so innovative, but also simple and easy to incorporate. They always leave me feeling a little bit creatively inspired in the kitchen. I have made another soup by Molly Baz and I did find it to be quite easy. And I think that this one is easy as well as a lot of the recipe just includes boiling the chicken and the vegetables. I let the broth cool down for about 15 minutes just so that the flavors really come out. And now I'm just gonna garnish it with lime, some scallion, and then the chicken. Oh, and also cilantro. Zach is also probably going to use some fish sauce, which I don't like too much, but he's obsessed with. This actually came out pretty good. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, at first I was not the biggest fan of it, but after letting it cool for about 15 minutes, now I can really taste the flavors. Zach loves it and he's just a big fan of anything porridgey or creamy or soupy. I, on the other hand, am not so much very often, but this is good, this hits. If you're like me and you need a little bit of crunch, some saltine crackers would likely go really well with this. 